Let's grow. Let's give ourselves the space to grow. So if you think of how our muscles grow from an activity and exercise or, or tra whatever training we do, initially there's a stimulus, a training stimulus that could be lifting the weights. Let's use that as an example. So we lift the weights and our shoulders are working and we get the bar above our heads and we do our repetitions and everything else. Now that, that stimulus, that, that training stimulus causes damage in our muscle fibers. And then if we have proper nutrition to fuel it, um, both in terms of the energy to lift it, but also the nutrition and the building blocks to recover, then, and we apply rest and recovery, we can then build back better. Keep, keep bringing that one in. <laughs> this must be a product of society. Um, we over, the muscles overcompensate as they build back better because they, they, the, the fibres will think, right, I'm being stressed here, so next time I'm going to be more effective at dealing with that level of, 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 of stress. So we've applied stimulus, we've properly fueled, we've allowed, and the recovery bit is important because if there's just stimulus, 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 there's no, no place to grow. Um, and, then we, and then we have built back better and bigger and stronger than we were before. That's what happens in our muscles. And some of the common dangers um, of, of training is we overtrain and under recover. And the same when we talk about stress management in the workplace. But the idea of this, I want to think about how do we grow in respect of our well-being? How do we grow in respect of some of the things that we've learnt and we're learning on this series? And for me, it's about trying things. It's about putting that stimulus in place. But it's also really important to, to fuel that. And we fuel that by um, re really allowing ourselves the space to reflect and to think. And that reflection and that think part, part, thinking part of it is really important. Because as I always say, yeah, well-being is a journey and it's a bit of trial and error. We don't know what's going to work for us, so we've got to reflect on what we're trying. And that reflection period allows us to think that does work and we can invest more of our time, effort, resource in pursuing whichever driver of form or pillar of well-being is working for us. And we also have to um, have the space to recover. So there's no point doing you know, 10 hours of mindfulness in a row we're not going to be effective at it, but we're not also letting it sink in. There's no point um, trying to you know, have the perfect nutrition plan and, and, and not allow ourselves some, some treats or some luxury or some things we enjoy because we, we won't stick to it. And if we don't have some stress in our life, then we're not going to be effective at our jobs. So we, we've got to have also the space to, to allow the practices that we're putting in place to sink in um, and to take effect. So for me, the nourishment part of this and the recovery part of this are kind of linked in terms of creating space, both to prioritize your well-being, but also to reflect on what is and isn't working. And then we can grow. I wish you fruitful growing. Yeah. Shoot.